Welcome back to the bench. Today we're going to be looking at this enclosure uh, for the T12 soldering iron that I got from Banggood. I'll put a link in the description to where. Um, basically what it does is uh, provides a faceplate for this temperature uh, controlled iron and um, on the back it has power. So um, I mentioned in the assembly video for this that I was going to have to move the LED. What I didn't realize is that in order to fit the faceplate on, I'm going to have to also remove this connector here because um, the front is supposed to go behind that ridge, so between this ridge and the board. So what I'm going to have to do is unsolder it, pull it off, um, put this faceplate, um, attach this to the faceplate, and then put it back on. So I'm just going to do that. Alright, at the end of the last clip you saw me put this uh, front plate on the case here. And this power supply is also sold by Banggood, but I don't have a clip of me opening it up. 
Um, but basically what this is is a 24 volt power supply um, takes in AC on this side and then um, on this side it outputs 24 volts DC. Um, the power supply is uh, pretty decent but um, it has sort of pokey um, solder connections at the bottom so I, I've wrapped it in the foam that it actually came in from Banggood because if you buy things from Banggood you'll know they ship things in, wrapped in this foam so I just put a layer of it underneath and then on both sides and for the power connections um, they have the sort of um, what do you call it, terminal blocks here um, and then uh, I have wired this um, input AC input in series with the switch so that the hot runs through the switch and uh, and that goes to here and then the ground or yeah the ground goes across here on this black wire get that in focus again on this black wire and then goes into the middle pin of this connector and that's earth ground which I believe is connected to the tip and then here's the front um, just like you saw it before uh, and so you can actually buy this whole kit from Banggood pre-assembled and based on the price of everything once I put it together this is probably the way to go with the pre-assembled kit because it, you know, it was kind of fun to put it together but honestly I just wanted a soldering iron um, and I think the pre-assembled kit is $40 ish plus shipping uh, but that's actually a really good price considering what you get and it comes with the the K type um, end here. Let me show you what that looks like. See, I've used it a little bit. This end works extremely well for uh, high thermal capacity stuff, and uh, if you're doing um, solder wick, it works really well for that. I've also purchased um, this tip, which is sort of a standard conical tip. I think this is actually lower power. I'll I'll measure the power up, but. In, in a later time, but I think the internal resist resistance is higher because uh, it, it just doesn't seem to have anywhere near the amount of power that the other one has. And then on the iron right now, I have this sort of chisel tip. And it's a little dirty, but um, this is a really good general purpose one. So uh, this all goes together. Uh, there's an aluminum housing here, uh, and it goes together like so. Oh, I have that backwards. One of the sides is got a groove and the other side has a key. So you have to line them up. And keep the phone out, out of the edge. But once it goes together very nicely, I mean it's a very nice package, it looks very good. And then I'll just put the four screws in here. Oh, I should mention the uh, the screws go in pretty well. Um, I had that one at an angle there, but if you if you're careful with it, um, they all go in really well. I did accidentally um, cross thread two of them, but uh, I think that was my fault. I don't think that's... I didn't. I don't think they came that way. Um, yeah, overall it's a really nice housing and a very nice looking unit afterwards. And at least for me, coming from the 936 Heiko clones, um, this is a much higher quality unit. And I think that's the last one. So in the back side here, in case I didn't show it very well in the previous clip, this is the power input and then this is the switch. I wired it so that up is that oh, is on, um, and then on this side you have this is the power connector. This is the display. There is a calibration. Um, I haven't tried any anything with that yet, 
And this is it's just a rotary encoder, so I mean it goes all the way around. But you can use that to uh, change the temperature, and then it also has a menu, but I haven't explored that yet. So I'm just going to turn this on here and just show you how quickly uh, it turns on. This particular power supply is a little bit slower than the other one, because you'll notice when it first turns on, there's a delay, and then oh, and you can't even see that. All right, let me try this again with a diffuser. All right, so I've just added a couple of sheets of anti-static bag here um, in order to add a little bit of diffuser so you can see the LCD. And I just want to show you that um, starting from completely cold, like I'm touching this right now, uh, we can turn this on. There is a slight delay. Well, the, I guess the capacitor has to warm up, but then we just start rising in temperature very quickly. And the target temperature... I believe it is uh, 240 and we're already there. And I can just show you now that we're melting solder. So I mean this thing works very quickly and very well um, and uh, you know and then if I want to change that bring it up to 290 go the lowest it goes to 200 and this is Celsius of course um, so I usually go at about 240 to 260. I find that that's usually uh, more than sufficient. Oh, I, I wanted to show you, when you shake this, there's a, a decimal right here that lights. And that's that uh, shake sensor, vibration sensor, in the handle here. So when I move this, that lights. So if I don't move it for a while, um, and I'll just prop this on something so that I can leave the camera running. And we'll just do a time lapse of what happens when when you when you let this run. And um, what you'll see is that in a little bit it'll drop down to 200. Um, and I'll show you what happens then. Right, so it's dropping now, um, and you can see uh, it's it's falling down to its uh, 200 temperature there. Um, this is sort of a standby temperature. What I'm going to do now is pick up the iron and show you uh, how quickly it returns to its normal temperature. So all I have to do is pick up the iron. I'm not waving it around or anything, and we're already at 240. So, I mean, that's how quickly it goes back up to temperature. Um, and then if I leave it again, it will uh, go all the way down to zero. And then I, I won't be able to revive it just by picking up the iron. I'll actually have to touch a button on here. Like, I can either move that dial or uh, just click it in. Um, those times, the timeouts for that are configurable. Uh, but the defaults have worked plenty well for me. Uh, what this means is that I really don't have to worry about accidentally leaving the iron on because I know it will just drop down to zero. Uh, it will consume a little bit of power, but I mean hardly any at all. So uh, that really does. It's a very useful feature because um, I've, I've definitely left soldering irons on before, uh, you know, for extended periods of time. You know, you've decreased the life of the iron and also there's a fire hazard and all that. So. Um, but I'll just let this uh, go to its um, sleep point, and then I'll come back. All right, so as you can see, we've cooled all the way down to zero. Um, so here's the soldering iron here. If I put it on the water, it's it's cold, and I can I can touch it. So it's I mean, obviously, it's not zero degrees Celsius, but it's not no longer heating it. So, I think that's what the, what it's trying to say. And uh, um, no amount of shaking, you can see that it's reading the shaking, but no amount of shaking causes it to turn on. And and in order for it to actually turn on, all I need to do is just touch this button, and uh, you saw the initial reading, and then it started heating up. And very quickly, we're back up to temperature, and we can 
melt solder again. So, um, very fast response time on that soldering iron. Alright guys, so that's it for this review of the soldering station. Um, the case and the power supply are from Banggood, although I did purchase the uh, control circuitry from eBay, but uh, they do sell it as a completed item and uh, as a kit, uh, or several different items. The case comes separately, the power supply, and uh, the, the front panel uh, with the soldering handle. Um, either way, it's a great deal, and I think it's a really good uh, iron for people who are getting started. Uh, a replacement, I think, for the HECO 936 clones that were on the market. Um, those irons were good too, but this just has a lot better thermal capacity, um, and because the, the thermocouple is right in the end um, and bonded together with the tips, uh, I think they just they have a lot uh, faster frequency uh, response to um, thermal load, so you can you can solder much uh, larger tracks with it. So uh, if you're interested in videos like this, please subscribe to see more. Um, if you liked it, uh, really help me if you could click that like button and comment below. Uh, sharing also helps, of course. Thank you very much for watching. I hope to see you in the next video. Bye.